Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. This past week, Marcus and Millichap published a new report on border proximate industrial. As we talked about a few weeks ago on the podcast, there's growing demand for local manufacturing or manufacturing located within the continent of North America. Global tensions with China and Russia have disrupted trade relationships that were once considered stable. The outlook is bright for border towns. And this has been motivated by pandemic-induced disruptions and the recently renegotiated Canada-U.S.-Mexico trade agreement. There's a whole pile of companies, both domestic and international, planning or in the process of making investments in operations in North America. This reorganization of global supply chains is increasing cross-border trade, a dynamic that will serve as a tailwind for long-term demand for domestic industrial space, but that industrial space is going to be located close to border crossings. Trade between the United States and Mexico and Canada was up 12% and 9% year-over-year respectively, while at the same time, trade with China is down 13%. Activity in the northeast Mexican state of Nuevo León is starting to become a meaningful driver of trade. Last year, as both Whirlpool, Hisense, Bosch, and Danfoss opened or broke ground on new plants in the area. Tesla, Brembo, NOAA iTech, and American Woodmark are also building or planning factories in the state. The resulting rise in cross-border trade by rail and truck is going to foster demand for warehouse and distribution space in the United States in those towns that contain a border entry point. Many of these border towns have small industrial space, and that suggests the demand is going to spill over into larger metro areas that are further from the border, but they're going to have greater regional connectivity. Cross-border trading expectations and $3.4 billion in federal funding set aside for improvements at land ports have fueled a wave of speculative industrial construction in U.S. border markets. In San Diego, industrial development is centered in Ote Mesa, where a new 10-lane border crossing is slated for 2024 completion. To the east, El Paso's port of entry has received a $600 million modernization investment which is expected to fuel demand for the 3.8 million square feet of industrial space that was already underway in March of this year. But it's not just at the U.S. southern border. There's also activity going on near the northern border, worth 8.5 million square feet ongoing in Detroit. A recent investment survey by Marcus and Millichap showed that nearly 60% of investors plan to remain active in the first half of this year. Among this group, many have large volumes of capital waiting to be deployed with industrial assets representing a favored property type due to the tight vacancy in the sector and near record asking rents. Investors are positioning themselves ahead of the user demand that will emerge from an increase in cross-border trade. And that suggests that border proximate listings may appeal to a larger pool of active buyers. Those seeking immediate gratification will probably want to gravitate towards the Texas border towns where the pricing below $100 a square foot and 7% cap rates are fairly common. El Paso and Corpus Christi might stand out. Corpus Christi houses the closest domestic seaport to Nuevo León, while El Paso's stock of logistics space is larger than nearby markets. Proximity to Nuevo León and several major interstates also should attract buyers to San Antonio. Institutional buyers are also eyeing newer assets in San Diego, Detroit, and Seattle. In my previous piece on nearshoring, we spoke about Mexico, but there's a lot of activity in Canada, specifically in the automotive sector. Southern Ontario's been a hotbed of automotive manufacturing for a long time. In the recent Volkswagen electric vehicle battery plant announcement, there's also Marwood, a manufacturer of composite parts for the auto industry. They've been part of the auto supply chain for a long time. They're adding 60 jobs in their facility, ramping up production of parts for the electric vehicle industry. All of these plants involve the movement of goods across the border. Investors targeting border towns might pursue additional types of commercial real estate. The increased volume is going to increase demand for food establishments, for truck stops, for hotels, for all of the things associated with that kind of trade. These properties are positioned to see additional spending. Truckers usually receive a per diem rate of $69 for food and other necessities. And that's going to help those local businesses. The top markets for investment in the report are Detroit, Michigan, the Seattle-Tacoma area, San Diego, San Antonio, Buffalo, New York, El Paso, Texas, Laredo, Texas, Tucson, Arizona, McAllen, Texas, and Bellingham, Washington. In particular, it's those larger markets near border crossings that are providing users with logistics advantages. Major metros, roughly 70 to 150 miles 
from domestic land ports of entry stand to benefit from nearshoring efforts and the increase in cross-border trade that comes with it. Compared with the border towns, those larger centers have larger industrial inventories that provide quicker access to other large population centers with a better road network. These characteristics are positioned to aid localized user demand for last-mile warehousing and regional distribution, which would favor markets like Tucson and San Antonio, both of which enter the year with an all-time low vacancy and very active pipelines that point to an expansion of at least 5% of existing industrial space. Demand for available space in Tucson might be further enhanced following the announcement of the new port of entry that will be constructed near Douglas, and that one is going to be dedicated to commercial traffic. This might be one of those targeted investment strategies to pursue despite what many see as an impending economic downturn. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.